Hello everyone, and welcome back to the podcast that we can never really think of a name for, and we've run through all the possible plays off of Mark, so now we're going to do Keep Calm and Carry On. Hello, Carrie. Beautiful. Thank so you. I love being included in the introduction like this. Exactly. Well, once I've exhausted all the possibilities, <laughs> you become the afterthought. Yeah, it's really nice. Isn't that nice? It's Lovely. like, you know, living in the world in 2019. I know. So what's <laughs> been going on, and what's going on right now? Oh my god, have you seen, have you been watching footage from um, from CNN of Notre Dame, totally engulfed in flames? It's It was heartbreaking to watch the little snippets that I saw. Uh, it sounded like they've been doing a lot of work and the and the spire also f- caved in. So the whole backside of it is on fire. It's basically and, gone. Yeah, yeah. So accidents happen. And let's not jump to conclusions, yeah. but... Could there be any kind of political ramifications from this if it's spun a certain way? What do you think? Well, that was interesting because one of the leads right out, right under the video was Macron is now on the scene. So I wondered how this, the political shenanigans were going to shape, shape up because, of course, he has to be there on the scene to manage the firefighters. Yeah, I know. It's a bit strange, <laughs> isn't it? It's sort of like, you know, French culture, well, global cultural yeah. icon under threat. Of course, he has to show up, but what's he going to do? Yeah. Right. I mean, he's going to throw a bucket of water on a flaming, on a gigantic flaming church. But let's take the worst case scenario. Let's suppose that this was done deliberately for political ends. Yeah. Well, that would throw the cat to the proverbial pigeons, wouldn't it? Well, I was actually worried at first that it had been an intentional fire, uh, intentionally a fire or some sort of tragic event had taken place. So um, I was kind of relieved that it seems to be something having to do with the renovations, though it's not, though it's not clear. But certainly it seems like some of the parties would take advantage of well, such a Well, exactly. Thing. The thought of burning the Reichstag did pop up to me when oh, I saw this going. Yeah. Giant, important cultural monument yeah. burned. Somebody gets blamed for it. Let's hope it doesn't turn out that way. Yeah. Um, actually, I was just I was traveling last week and I saw the Clint Eastwood film. Is it 514 to Paris? Is that what it's called? About oh. the two U.S. soldiers who disarmed the gunman oh, on the train. Oh, yes, that's right, yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. Right, I just yeah. So the interesting thing about that film is they actually cast the people who were in it in uh-huh. real life as the actors. Oh, jeez, okay. Yeah, and it's, it's so there's like one particular scene where the acting's like really a bit wooden, right? But yeah. after a while, you kind of like, you forget. Yeah. And it, the funny thing it made me think was... Good, God, Hollywood actors get paid a lot of money for doing something that's essentially easy. <laughs> if you can take a couple of soldiers and say, hey, lads, can you just act yourself right. as it, we fly you all over Europe and reenact this thing that you did? I'm surprised they said yes, just because you would think that it would like bring back terrible memories. Yeah, I know, but apparently yeah. no. Trauma-free zone, yeah. basically. Because, yeah, I mean, okay. they acted, I mean, I'd hope so, but they yeah. actually acted out the violent incident itself, yeah. and it was pretty brutal. Yeah. So I was thinking at the time, it's like, if these are the same people who did it, then that right, went right back through it. Right. But, you know, right. maybe they're just made of sterner stuff. Do you think that when the fire is gone and it's just sitting there, is this how, do, you, do they rebuild it? Like, I mean, what, how, what do you do? That's a very question. I mean, you know, the French have never been uh, short on using public funds for building public buildings. Yeah. So, you That's know, the point. rebuilding of Notre Dame could be something, but, you know. Yeah. Let's say it's a developing story. Yes, yes. Um, well, to talk from about one tragic accident to another, the Mueller report. Oh, no, I was about to say, yeah. My little link there would have been, uh, let's talk about from one developing story into one dead end, <laughs> the Mueller uh, report. Yes. So I, I alluded to this last week and, and somebody tweeted back when I tweeted out the podcast yeah. and someone said, how can you have such an opinion when you haven't read it yet? And, you know, and as you may recall and people who listen may recall, I've been saying from the beginning, my actual line on this, I checked this out from like way at the beginning was, all right, so you, because I said this on the podcast, you've got the combined forces of the CIA, Mm -hmm. right, the NSA, the FBI, Right, so the, the entire state of apparatus against a bunch of bozos from Queens. Mm-hmm. How long is it going to take to find out they've been up to bad stuff? And the answer is two years, and it turns out they weren't. Because if they really were, we would have known. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess the waiting is probably the best thing for the Democrats because at this point they continue, can continue to say until we read the full thing. But if it's three or 400 pages, it just feels like we know what we know. And I don't, it doesn't feel like there's much more to come out of it. Even if William Barr is a feckless, like in Huck. the back pa- pocket yes. of everybody and he's Donald Trump's like best friend and accountant, I still think he probably told us what the meat of it was. I mean, maybe Because if he didn't, he, I mean, yeah. think about it, he'd be in a ridiculous yes. and untenable position. 
position. Yes. Thunder, there's nothing here. We're not bringing charges. Yes. But page 137, it seems that the president murdered 12 children. Right. right? I mean, if you pull that, you're dead. But yeah. it would be a pretty unusual circumstance if that was the case. Well, and the fight, I think, is going to be between, be on this tiny point that 99% of the country won't care about is the redacted part. And Congress is going to complain that they got the redacted version and should the leadership not get the redacted point. Meanwhile, no one cares. And they're, I mean, DC can, talks about this and Twitter talks about it and no one, the voters are like, what? But why What's are happening? the Democrats unable to like just wean themselves away from this at this point? I mean, I remember seeing Elizabeth Warren on TV two, two years ago and she asked, you know, what, what's the focus of the Democrats going forward? And she went, the Russia thing, Russia, yeah, Russia, Russia, yeah. right? Well, you've played that card and it's yeah. a busted flush. But why are they unable to move on? We can't let go of the fairy tale. You, I'm now channeling all Democrats. You can't let go of the fairy tale that there's the smoking gun of of him giving the cash, the the duffel bag full of cash to Vladimir Putin. And it's just, you know there were three metaphors in that one sentence. Yeah, well, that was that's, brilliant. I know. That was that's good. the kind of person I am. Fantastic. Um, and I don't think they can let it go, nor do they want to let it go, um, because it plays to the basis emotions around this. And because the next presidential election is going to be all about Trump and me and not we were just talking about this before we started and not at all driven by policy. It's just going to be beat Trump. We don't know what really happened. Maybe they did meet in the back alley. But and didn't they try this before last time that the, the basically the entire campaign of the Democrats yes. was he's a bad person. Yeah. Didn't you get it? He's a yeah. bad person. Yeah. He's unelectable. I'm qualified. He's a bad person. Yeah. And it didn't work. Well, I think it would, people would say it's the messenger that Hillary Clinton was the bad messenger. But we bring in Bernie and maybe he's a much better messenger and can say that and people will be more excited about so it. So what's happening with Bernie? I, I mean, he's brung in a ton of money and, you know, he's working from the inside now. So people say the great frame, that's not socialized medicine, but Medicare for all. I mean, I think he's he's going to be through at least through New Hampshire and Iowa, given the amount of money that he's I made. I saw that he's also going to go on Fox and Friends. Uh, for an interview. Yeah. I missed that. So he's basically bringing it for a town hall. Town he's basically hall. going to bring it on. So that'll be interesting to see how he plays that one out. Because his claim is, I'm the populist too, but I'm the populist that's actually going to improve your life yeah. as opposed to just give a bung to my billionaire right. friends. So it'll be interesting to see if he can carry this off or indeed if Fox will allow him to. Well, they mu he must think that he's got something to gain by doing this, if only to say he went on Fox. Because otherwise he wouldn't be doing it. So he, there must be a play here that you know he can bring the country together and maybe he know, actually believes peace. that he can change people's minds that's crazy that's totally what? nuts isn't it that's, com <laughs> that's such a speaking substance. of speaking of changing minds yes what did what who just got a six month extension um Macedonia? No. Oh, um, God, what are they called again? Oh, Brexit. Brexit. The UK it's government. Brexit time again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically, having exhausted every possible option, they've decided to ask for more time to find another option. I've said this yeah. before, haven't I? I think so, but just the different date. Just different dates, yeah. exactly right. Does this coincide, do you think, that for Harry and Meghan to have the baby, and that's why they got the extension? Oh, I like that one. See, un unfortunately, my my uh, my family are currently in London, and we yeah. planned this trip ages ago yeah. because it would be post Brexit shopping day. Yeah. So they were meant to go there and buy me Chelsea Football Club because yeah. of the devaluation yes, right. of the pound, and yeah. it hasn't happened. And so, like all of Mayfair, right? And all, all of Mayfair, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But no, the serious point being, yes. um, yeah. So they've asked for an extension, and basically the Europeans, Macron in particular, featured largely again, but he kept saying quite reasonably. So what are we extending for? I mean, like, what, what is it you want to actually do? Why do you need this extension? The answer is because they can't agree on anything. They just need more time to figure out what they want, but they can't because they're so riven and split. Because they actually cannot. I mean, all the proposals put forward, no one, there's no majority They voted for anyway. eight different things, rejected them. They voted for four different things, rejected them. They had two amendments to do different things, they rejected yeah. them. They've got nothing. Do you think it's possible that they just weren't didn't know what they were voting because they're so exhausted and tired? And they're like, this is the seventh vote on the... 99th day like well, well, I don't one even of the, know the, there is one interesting development on this because I mean it's very easy to think from the, the point of view of you know people like us yeah. that uh, well you know I can understand why people are against Europe but it's not really Europe it's really like domestic politics and yeah. blah 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 and that's all true but apparently lots of people really are vexed about this and they're vexed because even if they're not convinced of the reasoning they have made this decision 
and it's up to the government to actually do it. And they're singularly not doing it. In fact, they're actively backsliding. So remember Nigel Farage? Mm, yeah. He's back. Yeah. And he has a new Brexit party because, of course, Brexit Ooh. means Brexit, right? Yeah. So they've just popped up. They're going to be campaigning, ironically, as usual, in the European elections. And apparently they're taking the Conservative vote by storm. What is it? Is this even a new platform? It's the same platform. It's the same as platform. Just, oh, okay. you know, just get out, pl- like, yeah. Really get out and stop farting about. Oh. And basically, he's <laughs> taking a huge number of conservative voters. Yeah. Now, if that make, can, maintains its traction, that transforms British politics. So, you know, this thing has got glacial undertones. Things are moving under the surface, which could be like really, really important. So he consolidates the conservatives. He splits it. Oh, he splits he basically, it. Okay. Like, the Tories themselves, there's very few real Remainers, yeah. right? Yeah. And most of them have left to form this thing called the Independent Group, or a few of them have. And then there's a whole bunch of people who are like, this is, given our constituency, this is insane, but our constituencies have voted for it, so mm-hmm. I need to go with it. And then there's a whole bunch, not just the Tory reform group, that are like, let's get out, we're done, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the what Farage threatens to do is to take the voting base of the let's get out, we're done, we're enough of this nonsense, mm-hmm. and break the Tory party. So imagine that British politics then does yes. what happens in Germany. You end up with a yeah. kind of right-wing anti-immigration, yeah. anti-Europe party yeah. that takes about 16% of the vote. Uh-huh. That means the Tories' vote loses 16%, right. basically. Or maybe like 12, right? Some comes from yeah. other parties. But then what happens is Jeremy Corbyn is just sitting with a big smile on his face. Right. Because two birds with one stone. Number one, he's been a backbencher for life. He's mm-hmm. an internationalist, anti-racist, um, lefty backbencher, right? And his lifetime's ambition is not to be, to be prime minister. It's to destroy the Tory party. Mm-hmm. And he's really close. Mm-hmm. And if he does, Labour moves in to occupy the entire centre of British yeah, politics. right. And he gets to be prime minister. So actually that split solidifies Hello. the Labour party. So the, the more the, the Tories party. go baba over each other, the more Labour benefits. Yeah. So. Well, the Democrats could really learn something from this, like splitting. Absolutely. I mean, and the Democrats were kind of close with their cleavages in the Republican Party, but the Republicans are always like one step ahead and are like, we don't care who our leader is. We're lining up behind that person. Yeah, I mean, so the great example of this, I mean, you'd think you'd be able to say, look, you know, the vast majority of Americans want decent health care, want some kind of gun control and believe in climate change. And our representatives are just uniformly against this and in denial. Mm-hmm. That should be enough to marginalize yes. them. Yeah. But it doesn't. Well, because, well, here's a transition for you, Blythe. I mean, it doesn't because we, the Democrats, and again, I'm using the royal we, are fighting over, for example, Joe Biden. And, ah. and whether he's creepy Uncle Joe, whether the the hugging, the touching. I mean, and I think this, so big, micro picture I get. But big picture, I think no one, 99% of the country, again, is not talking about this. I mean, at universities, we talk about this for lots of different reasons, and we have policies around this type of unwanted attention. But on the, you know, across the country, this just seems like the way that Democrats are like, there's a litmus test for everybody, and if you don't pass it, like, forget about it. Absolutely. It's a, Bill Maher, the comedian, said to, de- uh, was warning Democrats yeah. specifically yeah. about immigration and not to turn it into a quote unquote woke contest. Yeah. yeah. And it's a really nice way of putting it because if everyone was actually living in the woke moment that we are, then that, that would be a great place. I think it's like incredibly important and historically justified and da 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 yeah. da da. Yeah. The only thing is most Americans don't and aren't. So, you know, you can have 90% of the 12% of Americans who really are concerned with these things, yeah. and you've still got 90% of 12%. Yeah. If you yeah. want to actually unseat Trump, this is not going to do it for your base. The second yeah. thing is, you know, if these are general issues of general concern and not just sort of partisan competition yeah. within the Democrats, then, you know, do you actually see anybody on the Republican side talking about any of this stuff? I know that's the thing. You think this is the Democrats doing their own opposition against the, one of their candidates. They don't want to see him get it. I mean, this, now I'm just, who knows what this is accurate, but the Republicans can kind of just sit back and watch watch this happen. And, and as somebody who, you know, obviously I love to talk about American politics and I watch it very closely, I've even felt like I don't know what we're talking about here and i feel super sensitive towards this being at a university being so you you know phd that focused on ethnic and racial politics and you're saying to me that you're confused by what's going on i mean you get it but you you get it in the heart but you don't necessarily get it in the brain because i think what we should be talking about and we've talked a lot about this about the policy side of things like elizabeth warren actually put forward a lot of policies maybe we should be talking about that mayor pete who's now in the race 
um, may or may not have some policies behind him. I, I mean, that seems to be the thing that people vote but, on. Yeah, but maybe all, also maybe. But but this is something else I've spoken about. Is, I mean, I just I'm just post policy. Yeah. I mean, what people are crying out for is like no more of the sort of technocratic wish list of I've yeah. got a policy for them. <laughs> like good. what you know, what's the politics behind this? And, yeah. You know, the Democrat, the Republicans have a politics, right? They, they've basically made their accommodation with Trump's version of populism because they figured out what it is: more money for us. Yeah. Right. That's basically yeah. it, right? And then there's a sort of there's a Bernie sort of Elizabeth Warren is the wonky side of this, but the Bernie's the populist stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need twenty policies; I just need one. It's called healthcare. Yeah. Right? There you yeah. Go. And it's a politics of mobilization behind. It. But the rest of the Democrats, I mean, I remember one of the conversations we had. Who was it again that's big on digital privacy rights? Oh, yeah, there's Warren. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, who cares? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and like, you know, gropey Joe smells kids' hair. Yeah. Well, that's that then. Yeah. He should immediately be shot and evicted, yes. you know. This, this, why? What exactly is the politics you're trying to build? And if the politics you're trying to build is basically the type of politics that we see on campuses, then that's a small part of the population. Yeah. Well, you, I think you put it really well when we were uh, talking about this before we came, started recording was, has Joe, does he represent the Democratic Party anymore or, or has the Democratic Party left him or something like that? Yeah. And essentially it is like, I mean, there's, we use the phrase kissing babies because that's the only way out, you walk the rope line and you actually, it's the only time where you can take a stranger's baby and hold it and kiss it. Right. And slapping of the bags, those are all And suddenly we've terms. discovered video of a politician kissing babies yeah. and we're totally outraged. Yeah. Oh my God, who knew they did this? And this our, is not by to the say, way, our friend John sitting here yeah. is just going, no, no, absolutely not. And this is not to say I'm condoning any of this behavior. It's simply to say, what are what are we actually talking about and the times in which we're talking about it? And, and Can you also build a politics on perpetual moral outrage? I, I mean, you're just like yeah. morally outraged at everything all the time. It's like sort of Twitter exploding 24-7. Yeah. And eventually you just switch off Twitter. It's yeah. too exhausting. No, it is it's so true. It's so true because it's what what next does fill in the blank person do or say that's slightly off and, you know, was off the cuff and, you know, all the things that we say. And maybe we shouldn't dismiss it and excuse no, so it. Well, no, people have asked me, you know, why do I never get involved in politics? And the yeah. answer is because I'm not consistent enough. Yeah. Right? I mean, I might say something I think is funny and I might even get a laugh in a room at that time. But you will bet it will be torn apart, edited, yeah. commented yeah. on social media, taken out yes. of context. Like who wants to do that? Yeah, I mean, let alone in five years and when you look like a real heel. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. that's it. Yeah. There's, there's the thing. Yeah. There's this great, I was listening to this great interview and it was about Justice uh, Chief Justice John Roberts. And when he was working for the uh, Reagan administration, he had the foresight to say that presidential records should actually be sealed for X number of years. And his justification was people now working maybe in the public eye when the presidential records would be, uh, would be up for public view. And I just thought, holy cow. So, I mean, it was a really smart move, right? Because all, all his writings are now still um, kept secret. But, I mean, that's the sort of thing that I don't think. And it's not like everything we should we do should be with an eye towards I'm going to run for public office. But it, there's no, you know, things get lost in translation very quickly with oh, time. Yeah. Well, not just yeah. lost in translation. I mean, they're, they're deliberately appropriated for a politics, yeah. Yeah. regardless yeah. of how they were produced. Yeah. And in a sense, you know, newspapers have always done that, et cetera. I mean, that's part of the game. But now it's it's so random. Yeah. It's hard to see yeah. where the Democrats are yeah. heading. I mean, the Republicans are consistent, right? More money for me to hell with you. It's, it's a very simple agenda. But I don't know where the Democrats want to take themselves. They don't know either. I think that's the whole point. Is there, they have been rudderless for a long time. And this is even pre-Obama, I think, that there was, a, there's been, who's the leader of the Democratic Party, even during the Obama administration? Yes, the president, but was he the real leader? I mean... No, he was this wonderfully empty cipher that yeah. we just dumped anything we wanted on top of him under the banner of hope and change. And even the Clintons, I mean, I think there's an argument to be made that the Clinton, with Bill Clinton is in office, he splits the party with the sort of centrist, moder- centrist thing, and mm-hmm. that really has left the party as like, we don't know, are we... To the because far those, left or yeah, the middle. and but well, because those people have been correctly delegitimated by the events of the past ten years, yeah. beginning with the financial crisis, yeah. but also yes. the support for Iraq and everything else. So yeah. that yeah. old leadership yeah. cast is gone. The question is, well, what replaces it? Yeah. And if what replaces it is campus politics, I'm sorry, you're just not taking the rest of America with you. No, because everyone thinks that you're just this special snowflake, and what does that mean? Yeah. Um, but luckily, Ooh. we've got real problems. Yeah. 
this is a tough transition. It's a tough transition. <laughs> well, do you think, here, here is, here okay. is, do you think you could inoculate yourself against that type of politics? Man, do I wish there was a vaccine for it. Oh, oh so, man, wow. So one. what's been going yes. on? Well, in Brooklyn, there's been an outbreak, a pretty severe outbreak of measles, in fact, with the, among the Orthodox Jewish uh, community. And I guess it all goes back to a specific pamphlet that was handed out that led, um, led this community to think to not vaccinate against, uh, against measles. And that then gets into this wonderful thing called herd immunity. Yes. Who knew that we were cattle? <laughs> that you need to have about, depending on the virus, between 90 and 95 percent coverage, apparently. And then basically, it doesn't matter if you've got like four or five percent of people that don't have it, but if yeah. you cut below that number, that really causes problems. And, you know, these diseases that we've, you know, forgotten about, whooping yes. cough, diphtheria, yep. measles, whatever, yep. right? They kill they can paralyze, they can like, you know, really do damage right. and they spread really, really fast. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's another moment of that kind of post-fact world. It's yeah. not just post-fact politics. Yeah. So I, I remember I was talking to somebody from Cinque Stella, the, um, the Italian uh, populist party, mm -hmm. like the, the pseudo-lefty party, yeah. basically, the Beppe Grillo and the internet crew in, in the South. And uh, somehow this notion of vaccine came up and uh, they're very popular. The anti-vax pos position is very popular amongst Cinque Stella. And I'm trying to explain, you know, why is this and it seems to be this thing that like you know if you suddenly if you're on the left or you're critical you're you have to be critical of everything so so you know it's you know everything becomes up for grabs and suddenly it's like well you know there was this documentary i saw yeah. on netflix that was yeah. made by somebody who has no agenda whatsoever that tells you that really basically breast cancer is caused by like teeth right right because that's yeah. one that's out there uh, and you know the whole anti-vaxxer thing is based upon a paper from a doctor in britain who was struck off for fraud Right? One doctor. Yeah, one guy, right? Wow. So, you know, there's all this sort of stuff. And yeah, it spreads out. Its tentacles go up because, yeah. you know, the right love conspiracies, right? But the left love conspiracies too. And what better than sort of all these drug companies are doing this for profit and nobody knows and it's made from chicken DNA. Mm -hmm. And that's why my kid is not the genius I mm -hmm. hoped, mm -hmm. right? And then that's, that's what it comes, you know, there's a lot of that goes into this. So, but at the end of the day, you know, these are things that we public health should have banished and had banished in many yes. cases 60, 70 years yeah. ago and, and they're back. Yes. I mean, I've had the booster shot for measles. I mean, it's, we have sort of moved on because it's like, it is a fact that it inoculates me from measles. And there's no evidence for any of the yeah. claims. Like, right. it's just the end of it. If, if, if people want to talk about politics, right, we're just sort of like, yeah. well, America's obviously got the best healthcare system and you yeah. show them a bunch of data Please. that says yeah. that's simply not true. Yeah. And they go, well, I don't like that. You go, well, you know, you're entitled to your own right. opinion, but you're not allowed to entitle to your yeah. own facts, right? And now this moves into climate change, right? Yeah. So climate change is, well, it's really a matter of opinion. No, it's not. It's a matter of fact, right? Here's the facts. And now it's moved into medicine. Yeah. So, you know, so I don't know where this stops. Eventually, there are just no facts anymore. There are only opinions, and that's what matters, which is really not true. Well, and that's, hard, I mean, especially medicine, because I don't, I go to the doctor, and the doctor, I have a cold, and, they, and the doctor tells me something, and I don't understand, like, three quarters of the words, but I just trust that they're not giving me a pill filled with cyanide, and it's going to help. But, you know, maybe I should be smarter about this. And but the part of this thing goes into the, I mean, and I'm sympathetic to the side of it, it goes into the critique of experts. Yeah. So yeah. remember the British minister who said, I think the public have had enough of experts and yeah. then he's ridiculed. And then you have the Bank of England coming out with these things that say Brexit will basically destroy mm -hmm. X amount of GDP and all the rest of it. And then, you know, they'd start the process and employment holds up growth mm -hmm. holds up you know mm -hmm. and and before that of course the financial crisis you know banks are the best judge of their own risk etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know there's multiple you know we're spreading democracy in iraq i mean give me a break right so there's multiple reasons to have diminished faith in the elites who do that sort of stuff but those people never dealt with facts yes yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. And now this cancer has spread out from that area into anything that you don't like right. becomes a non-fact. And that's really different. Well, and I think when you, in those examples, it was it's fact versus opinion. I believe I can spread democracy in in throughout Iraq, and therefore we're going to spend a billion dollars trying to do it. Versus, there's actually some three trillion. Yeah, there's not, actual not, like tests. I don't know that people that Jonas Salk did that actually showed that I no longer have the terrible polio disease. Yes. Um, and I think the line between my opinion and the fact is so incredibly blurry mm, right now. Absolutely. Did you know that there's a 
another rough transition. Go on. Did you know that there's a music festival happening in Southern California, Coachella? Uh, no, I was completely unaware of this. Um, so for me, festivals were things like Glastonbury, uh-huh. where you got covered in mud and slept in the open for three days yeah. and, and got really, really outrageously wasted, and then listened to bands. Oh. And I, 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 so That's you know, sweet. everyone has a phone these days, and I flip yes. onto Apple News when I'm totally bored and I'm sitting on a train or something. Yeah, and and suddenly it's all the stuff about Coachella. So yeah. tell me about Coachella. Well, I just want just to update you. They now sell festive uh, festival wear at places like Old Navy and stores like that. So you dress because you have to dress in a particular way to be at the festivals. And so Glastonbury, you have to wear like the high hunter boots, for example, because it's so muddy. Yes, and so there's first of all a certain attire. Not that most people actually did yeah but, you know. and there is music i think still yes, but now still it's a real like the influencers are there you know influencers i know what influencers okay like, yeah you know, that that type those people are now there. no i've seen yeah. the pictures and it basically yeah. like you know my image of like a rock one you know a festival yeah is a giant field with a stage and people going mental and yeah. this seems to be basically models doing selfies yes yes and Yes, and wannabe models. And, and wannabe models. Third tier wannabe, wannabe, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. But, so it sounds like something we should definitely get I think we need free to, tickets we, to next, go. Next yes. year, we need to like do this live from Coachella. Oh, I think so, for sure, for sure. I think sure. that would be great. Um, did you watch the premiere yesterday? No, and don't tell me anything about it. I did either. It. Please, please, right. nobody Good. say anything. Nobody's, I've nobody been trying... write to us, nobody tell yes, us anything. Nothing, Anybody who please. puts any plot reveals in the please, comments, please, I will please. find you. Do not do this. I've been off social media all day because I've just been trying to avoid any headlines. It's actually a great excuse for being off social media. It's really nice, actually. It is. It's just like yeah. I can't look at it because yeah. I might find out something. Yes, exactly. That's it. Exactly. Okay. So basically, I'm not going to watch season eight for seven years, and that way I can right. just stay off of social media for seven years legitimately. Whoa. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. And then I wouldn't know what Coachella 2 was. <laughs> we'll be all there. We'll be there. And you'll just be there. And we'll like, this is I'll the just new be, stage. I'll just be grumpy old yeah. granddad at that point. I'll be like, what are these young people doing? I <laughs> don't understand. Noise. What's that noise? <laughs> yes, can you call that music? <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. Well, until next time. Until next time. We will carry on regardless. Mm-hmm.